below. You are redeemed. Redeemed from sickness. Redeemed from death. Redeemed from sin. By the power of the Holy Ghost. It's your season to win. Take your healing. Take your freedom. Take your favor. of Jesus. Father, we rejoice that we have this another opportunity to minister to your people. And I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely in this service today. Bodies and yokes are destroyed and whatever is not planted by my father is rooted out. I decree that your word comes with clarity. Your people equipped, built up, edified, Jesus glorified. And we declare that by the end of this service, nobody lives the same way they came. We give you glory and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the world. I do the word naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media community, brothers and sisters online. We're so glad to welcome all of you to this World Feast tonight. And we want to welcome the entire Aquaibom State community connected to this service right now by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquaibom, Unio FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you brothers and sisters in Aquaibom and I wanted to do your loved ones a favor and your friends a favor give them a call reach out to them and ask them to tune to this radio station right now life is flowing through the airwaves and our social media community you know we are on a global campaign so let's do it again share the video on your page share with all the groups on your page and ensure that the video gets to as many groups as possible put them on telegram monogram and put them on whatsapp groups always a joy to labor with you guys in getting the word of his grace to the end of the earth I also want to welcome all our campuses that are connected to the service right now. Oh my goodness, we love every one of you in the campuses and all our coordinators. It's always a joy to know that the grace of Jesus is abundant for all of us. We also want to welcome all of you in the house centers, all of you in the church houses, house centers. We're so glad to have all of you, our power citizens right here in Aquaibom. It's a joy to be able to bring to you the word of God today. All right, grab your pen, your notebook, and your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self in his presence. Amen. Praise God. All right. We are still examining the subject we started dealing with on Sunday morning. When is the miraculous? When is the miraculous? We will be examining when is the miraculous. We have established that a miracle is God's power working actively god's power working actively we have said that the power of god suspends natural things that is 
when God's power is working, it is not natural. God's power is not logical. So whenever I am believing for a miracle, I am not being logical. You can't believe the gospel and not believe in miracles. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, brother Paul said to the church at Rome, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God. So the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. So you cannot believe the gospel and not believe in miracles. Salvation is a miracle. The forgiveness of sins is a miracle. The incarnation of Christ is a miracle. And the resurrection of Christ is a miracle. Christianity is totally saturated with the miraculous. Miracle is when God's power is at work. When God's power is at work. We have also established that the power of God is restorative. The power of God is restorative. We establish that the power of God is creative. We also establish that the power of God is curative. And we establish that the power of God is preservative. Say with me very loud, every one of you, God's power preserves me. God's power cures me. God's power heals me. God's power provides for me. And God's power creates for me. Glory to God. And of course, God's power is protective. So that is why the gospel, when the power of God is unleashed, it may not be logical. But I'm telling you, when the power of God is unleashed, it will give the desired expectation. Because when God's power is unleashed, it suspends the laws of nature and creates the desired results. It's important for you to note that physical healing is God's will in redemption. Jesus' sacrifice was for sin and sickness too. And we can enjoy physical healing in Christ Jesus. In the Old Testament, you will consistently see several promises of healing. The very first time we see healing, it was an unbeliever that was healed. That is how gracious our God is. Genesis chapter 20 verse number 17. Genesis chapter 20 verse number 17. So Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maid servants and they bore children. There was sickness here and Abraham prayed and God healed. These were people who did not have a right standing with God. The next time we see healing in a massive way in the Bible is in Numbers chapter 21. The children of Israel were beaten by snakes. Look at Numbers chapter 21 verse 7. Numbers chapter 21 verse number 7. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Next verse, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Observe that none of them was made to fulfill or obey any commandment. What we have is a sacrifice or a substitute from God. The, the brazen serpent on a pole was symbolic of the sacrificial work of Christ. And as long as they are looking at the sacrificial work of Christ, expressing their faith in what Christ has done, no serpent was able to harm them. Please pay attention. Observe that none of them was given any instructions or conditions. All they were required to do was just to look at the serpent on the pole. Which is symbolic of the sacrificial work of Christ. Look at John chapter 3 verse number 14. John chapter 3 verse number 14. And 
as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. They disobeyed, but God blessed them in the substitutionary sacrifice. God announced himself again in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I, the Lord, that healed thee. I, the Lord, that healed thee. That is a self-declaration. The rendition here can be seen as someone who keeps sickness away from you. Look at Exodus chapter 23 verse 25. We are establishing God's healing miracles all through the ages. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. So we will see a whole lot of individual healings. In the book of First Kings, chapter 17, verse 17 to 24, the widow's son was healed. In Second Kings, chapter 4, verse 18 to 37, the Shunammite son was raised from the dead. This was all under the ministry of Elijah and Elisha. In Second Kings, chapter 5, verse 1, Naaman was healed of leprosy. In Isaiah chapter 38, we see the issue of Hezekiah's sickness and recovery. So, it is strange to say that the days of healing are over. Because over and over, as we look through scripture, what we keep seeing is God's healing power, God's mercy, God's graciousness, God's kindness demonstrated in how he healed both those who believe and those who never believed healing is a free gift of god it is god's act of kindness it is his nature to do good you know it is it's pastor joseph prince who said god is altogether lovely altogether beautiful healing is good because god is good God is a healing God. And the Old Testament teaches the same. Where we just read in the book of Exodus 23, 25, he says, And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Part of God's covenant with Israel was to be their covenant healer. He, he was committed to heal their sicknesses and diseases. Look at Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destructions. And delivered them from their destructions. His word is a healing word. When is miracles? When is healing? When God's word is is spoken when god's word is taught when god's word is preached that is when miracles occur he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction so god's word is a healing word and it is sent to heal and to deliver not just deliver but to deliver from all their destructions. That the word of God comes to bring deliverance from every destruction. Because God is a good God and God is a healing God. So his word has a primary assignment to bring salvation, to bring deliverance and to bring healing. Please pay attention. In the book of Psalm 103 verse 1 to, to 4. Psalm 103 verse 1 to 4. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And these are the benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Now, please pay attention. With the forgiveness comes his healing. With the forgiveness of sins comes his healing. So, healing is a benefit of God's forgiveness. It is a blessing or it is God's goodness in action. Healing is God's goodness in action. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and held to all their flesh. So God's word is God's medicine. It brings health. God's word is God's medicine. God's power to cure. God's power to create. God's power to restore. God's power to preserve and intervene by suspending the laws of nature. So, God's word is God's medicine. It brings health. I find healing and wellness in God's word. The word of God is good news. The gospel brings good news. The gospel brings with it the mercy of God. And healing is available in his world healing is available in god's world in the last service we examined two scenarios in mark chapter 5 and we saw some things that happened first of all we talked about the woman with the issue of blood 12 years 12 years and we said that the dominant information in your mind will be what you hear regularly. The dominant information in your mind will be what you hear regularly. And we said, you need to protect your heart. He says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the forces, out of it are the influences, out of it are the forces or another translation says out of it are the wellspring of life you guard your heart you protect your heart from things that are not faith compliant from things that are not miracle atmosphere compliant you guard your heart you protect your heart from thoughts which originates from words that are contrary to God's plan, to God's character, and to God's will to bring healing all the time. You don't have to listen to everything. I mean, look at Mark chapter 5 verse 36 where we read concerning Jesus and Jairus on the way to Jairus' house. And then the woman with the issue of blood redirected God's power. She redirected God's power. And when she redirected God's power, while Jesus was still talking with the woman, the Bible tells us that the daughter of Jairus, where Jesus was going to bring healing, the people from Jairus' house came with a bad report. Mark chapter 5 verse 36, put it up for me. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, what word was spoken? Look at verse 35. Mark chapter 5 verse 35. Then we read 36. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? 
as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. As soon as he heard, he told him, Be not afraid, only believe. Look at Mark chapter 5 verse 40. Mark chapter 5 verse 40. And they loved him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. There are people you have to put out, especially a crowd of unbelief. You stop any information that is contrary. Sometimes when you are doubting the power of God is because of a wrong information that you listen to. A wrong information that you gave your attention to. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 25. Matthew chapter 11 verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. Who is a babe? A babe is an attitude, an attitude of doing what you are told, like an easy believism. But when you start becoming wiser, you are reasoning through. You know, analyzing and sometimes, you know, jokingly, I say analysis leads to paralysis. You start saying, how will God do it? And we said earlier, that keeps people in danger. Because God provides needs, God supplies supernatural direction, and the way he does it is not logical. And that is why you must make up your mind and continually say, I believe in the power of God. I believe in miracles. I believe in God's ability to intervene in the natural course of things. Why? Because he says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth." all things so we figured out what happened to that woman in mark chapter 5 we said number one she heard about jesus she heard about jesus you know the healing ministry is explained there was power and the power of god was tangible tangible in in healing the sick jesus corrected that's why the power is curative he corrected jesus healed multitudes and this will mean any kind of pressing let's examine something before we continue with the woman with the issue of blood who heard in luke chapter 5 verse 17 luke chapter 5 verse 17 and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was there to heal. And Jesus healed non-Jews in Matthew chapter 8. He healed a Syrophoenician woman's daughter in Matthew 15. He was anointed to heal. You know, the reason why people got healed is because they believed that they could be healed. What they had about Jesus was not a message of what happened from the cross to the throne. What they had about Jesus was how he went about doing good and healing. And they simply believed and he healed them. Those that didn't get healed in the meetings of Jesus were the Pharisees, you know, the Pharisees. You know, uh, they, did, they did not believe in, 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 in what Jesus was doing. And they said, actually, Jesus was operating by a spirit called Beelzebub. Now, friends, God never uses sickness. Neither does he use the devil to minister to his children. Jesus came to heal. 
Look at what brother Peter says in Acts chapter 2 verse 22. Acts chapter 2 verse 22. You men of Israel, Jesus, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye you yourselves also know. Which means primarily healing power is available because of what Jesus has made available in his resurrection. And brother Peter kept talking about Jesus. Look at Acts chapter 3 verse 13. Acts chapter 3 verse 13. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Look at Acts chapter 5 verse 31 to 32. Acts 5 31. Him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Next verse. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. Whom God had given to them that obey him. There was enough testimony to say Jesus healed. There was no single account that he made anyone sick. There was no pattern in how he healed the sick. He used a lot of things to reach people. And ladies and gentlemen, if we are looking for evidence of healing, Jesus' ministry is a valid evidence. Now the woman with the issue of blood, when she heard about Jesus, you have to know what you are hearing. And Jesus said, take heed what you hear. If what she heard was negative, she wouldn't have touched his clothes. Because, you know, oftentimes people only stop blessing us when we hear something negative about them. So we are dampened and our faith is compromised. If you didn't hear anything about a man of God, you just get blessed. That means you can protect your heart because if you don't protect your heart, you will allow the enemy to bring in negatives to make sure you don't receive what is yours from the Lord. You know, Jesus was crucified within a few hours and he healed. He healed. He went about healing everybody. Even at the point of his death, he was still forgiven. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. What a compassionate savior. What a compassionate Christ we have. And somebody, you know, um, if you give yourself to negative informations and, and corrupting influences, you will find out that somebody that used to be a blessing to you no more blesses you. No more. Why? Because you had something. You allowed something silly to get into your ears and into your heart and it created an environment of dishonor. So in other words, to believe for a miracle is not difficult. You just need to believe in your heart and say with your mouth, I believe the power of God is working in me all the time. You believe it and you say it, you receive it and you have it. You receive it and you have it. It becomes complicated when we complicate it. Otherwise, it's simple. We also said you must believe in the miraculous. You must expect God's power to work all the time. Every time you wake up in the morning, expect the power of God to go to work. And every time you get into your bed at night, expect that even while you sleep, the power of God is at work in your body, correcting things that are out of place in your body. Any area where all your efforts have failed, the moment your efforts begin to fail in the physical, switch over and begin to declare faith in God's power. Faith in God's ability to intervene and create a miracle. You know, never in any way deride the miraculous. Never. Always affirm the miraculous. 
The miraculous is part and parcel of our faith in God. Why? Because we believe in the power of God. Hey, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. How was he raised? Can you explain the resurrection of Jesus logically? No. Can you explain the resurrection of Jesus scientifically? No. <laughs> Why? It's a miracle. And I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. So we said all things are possible to him that believes. When is the miraculous? It is when I believe in my heart and speak with my mouth that God's power is working on my behalf. So it doesn't matter how long the condition. This woman was 12 years and in Jairus' case, it was a dead end. Yet the power of God worked. I believe the woman touched his clothes and was healed. I believe it happened. I believe it happened. That situation bothering you, you know, think the fact that God's power is working on your behalf. That your situation, that circumstance, that challenge, that financial challenge, that marital situation, you know, that situation of unproductiveness, that situation of barrenness, just begin to see that in the natural, that's what it looks like. But in the spiritual, God's power is at work in that situation, suspending nature and creating your desired result. You watch what comes to your heart. You know, I keep my heart from fearful thoughts. My heart is full of the testimony of God's power. Every time I wake up, I think about God's power. I think about how God has helped me over the years. How God has delivered me from all kinds of things. I think about how God has kept me, preserved me from the snare of the enemy. I keep my heart from fearful thoughts. My heart is full of the testimony of God's power. Why? Because all things are possible to him that believes. And I am a believer. Say with me very loud, everybody. When it comes to the power of God, I am thoughtless. I just believe. <laughs> I just believe. You know, the songwriter says, Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. I tell you, the power of God is moving right now. There are miracles happening already. Miracles are happening already. Yeah, the power of God is moving in your body. From your head to the soles of your foot right now, pain is living. And every deformity is being corrected. Yes, every deformity is being corrected right now. Every deformity is being corrected right now. Hearing condition has just been healed right now. Has just been healed right now. Somebody with a neck situation has just been healed right now. Yes, yes, has just been healed right now. I, I hear the Holy Ghost say to me, somebody with a spinal cord situation. A spinal cord situation that makes it difficult for you to actually walk. You have this excruciating pain right at the down part of your spinal cord. God's healing power is flowing right now in your body. It's flowing right now in your body. Somebody else with a speech impediment, your tongue has just been loose. 
Your tongue has just been loose. Begin to do what you couldn't do before right now. Miracles are happening all over the place. Miracles are happening all over the place. Because God's power is working in your body. God's power is working in your organs. God's power is working in your system right now. The woman heard. Then the woman said, the Bible says, for she said, in the Greek it says, she kept saying, she kept saying, she kept saying what she believed. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be whole. She was saying it in contradiction to what was available. All the symptoms, all the pain, the blood. She spoke in contradiction and emphasized what she believed. Always learn to respond to contrary situations. Always learn to respond to contrary situations. Jesus saw the wind and the waves. He stood up and rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea Peace, be still. There's somebody listening to me now. There's been a lot of crisis in the company where you work. A lot of crisis and confusion. And you are innocent, but you are being implicated because they are looking for a way to exit you. Right now, I speak to the circumstances in that office. Peace, be still. Peace be still and i command circumstances to walk in your favor to walk in your favor we shift situations satan get your hands off in the name of jesus thank you lord for miracles thank you lord for healings thank you lord for testimonies thank you lord for 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 yeah 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 there's somebody listening right now there's somebody listening right now you've had this growth this swelling on your legs the left leg has been so swollen you've done all kinds of medical exams and medical tests the doctors can't find anything but the left leg the left leg is swollen and it is affecting the way you walk it is affecting you badly but the doctors can't seem to find what is wrong with the leg god's power is moving on your on your left leg right now and in the name of jesus that swelling begins to diminish god's healing power is flowing through that left leg receive 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 in the name of jesus thank you lord jesus you must always learn to respond to contrary situations let your focus and attention be on god's power that growth can disappear that pain doesn't have to stay in your body listen you don't have to put up with pain jesus bore your pains you don't have to put up with pain it is not normal to be in pains and that pain has to go now you just receive receive your healing from that excruciating pain receive your healing right now from your head to the soles of your foot the weakness in your legs is living the numbness there's somebody you have numbness numbness on your right hand sometimes the hand just goes dead and numb right now god's power is moving into that hand and correcting everything that was out of place in that body god's power is moving in your right hand god's power god's power is at work in your body right now god's power is at work in your body right now god's power is at work in your body right now receive 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 in the name of jesus thank you father thank you father thank you father she said if i can but touch the hem of his garment i know i shall be whole you cannot speak in faith and act in doubt. Let me repeat. You cannot speak faith and be acting in doubt. 
let your actions correspond with what you say in your mouth i believe in my heart and i say with my mouth if you have a headache what's the first thing that comes to your mind panadol or paracetamol no the first thing that should come to your mind is the power of god is at work in my body if somebody calls you to pray for them what's the first thing you say is it have you been to the doctor why the doctor first why not the power of god is working in your body right now let's believe together that you are healed that is how christians talk let's believe together right now that you are healed does it mean you shouldn't see the doctor i didn't say that but let's believe together for god's healing power believe in the power of god you know there's something about the faith of god that makes you resolve and you never give up it makes you resolve and you never give up keep affirming the realities of the power of god even in the face of contradictory circumstances keep affirming and reaffirming your faith in the realities that are available via the power of god keep saying god's power is at work in my body say it again god's power is at work in my body say it one more time god's power is at work in my body the woman said it then she did it then she received it she did it if i can but touch the hem of his garment i know i shall be whole then she pressed through the crowd and she touched him she touched him and jesus said somebody touch me and at that moment the blood stopped the power of god is at work in your body as i speak you say it in your heart you say it with your mouth you expect miracles all the time whenever you pray expect god's power every time you pray expect god's power to go to work look at matthew 21 22 matthew 21 22 and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer believing you shall receive all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer believing you shall receive look at mark eleven twenty four. mark eleven twenty four. therefore i say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them no doubt jesus had an extended meaning in what he said but you see just like the miracles of the four gospels pointed to the redemptive sacrifice of christ there were things also that we were believed for that essentially pointed to his finished work but you see it's still the power of god walking he says when you pray believe you receive when did you receive when you prayed <laughs> when did you receive when you prayed when you prayed what happened when you prayed you receive when did you receive when you prayed believe you receive when you pray believe you receive it and you shall have it you see prayer is fellowship with the power of god prayer is fellowship with the power of god james chapter 5 verse 16 james chapter 5 verse number 16 confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much availeth much say with me everybody when i pray it's powerful 
when i pray power is made manifest say that again when i pray power is made manifest say with me when i pray more i see god's power more glory to god see prayer is not a mere ceremony prayer is actually getting the power of god to walk look at acts chapter 5 verse 19 talking about peter acts chapter 5 verse 19 but the angel of the lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said next verse go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life peter was taken into captivity an angel obviously set him free in acts chapter 12 once again he was taken into captivity look at acts chapter 12 verse 4 acts chapter 12 verse 4 and when he had apprehended him he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after easter to bring him forth to the people next verse peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him somebody asked why is it that when the church prayed for peter and peter was delivered and then he showed up they doubted you remember they doubted they didn't believe it was peter you know oftentimes when people pray for you you will have to do the receiving yourself i cannot pray for you and receive for you i pray for you you receive so they did the praying and peter did the receiving and you have to do the receiving yourself so obviously peter received why because he acted on what they prayed for now the third place is acts 27 23 when brother paul saw that angel 27 23 of acts for there stood by me this night the angel of god whose i am and whom i serve i like that introduction whose i am and whom i serve look at verse 4 24 and 25 saying fear not paul thou must be brought before caesar and lo god had given thee all them that sail with thee next verse wherefore sars be of good cheer for i believe god that it shall be even as it was told me now look at what paul said the angel of god whose i am and whom i serve that is the first thing paul sees he sees the angel and he knows who he is whose i am means i am god's son i am the house of the spirit of god paul said whom i serve always say what the word says about you always identify yourself then he says i believe god in other words paul expected god's power to walk on his behalf you know god's power is working on our behalf when you pray expect the miraculous notice a few things there is such a thing about what you believe in your heart jesus in luke chapter 4 verse 24 pointed out you know look at that luke chapter 4 verse 24 and we read to 27 and he said verily i say unto you no prophet is accepted in his own country but i tell you of a truth many widows were in israel in the days of elias when the heavens were shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land but unto none of them was elias sent save unto Seraph seraphat a city of sidon unto a woman that was a widow 
And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. When Naaman went to the river Jordan, notice the prophet's instruction. Jump into the water seven times. Not even a pool, a dirty river. The maid said to Naaman, Master, what is it? Just wash yourself and behold. Because Naaman was getting offended and didn't want to obey the instructions. Now, now just listen. Supposing Naaman had stopped the fifth time. But he did it seven times and was cleansed. Which means, honor, please pay attention. Honor is to take the instruction to heart. And follow the instruction to the later. That is honor. The second instance is the widow of Zarephath who had her last meal. Now, that prophet said, make for me first. That's her last food. But the prophet says, make for me first. Two illogical things. But both Naaman and the widow of Zarephath were Gentiles. They were not Jews. A very vital lesson. Because Jesus came to Israel and they received him not. So, there's such a thing about honor in your heart. Seeing things the way God sees them. Seeing things the way God sees them. You know, I'm a person of honor. Say that with me. I'm a person of honor. I honor the ministry... I am receiving from. Amen. You know, Anna and Eli, you know the story. Eli, the prophet, misunderstood Anna and even accused her of drinking. <laughs> and she said, my Lord, I have not drunk alcohol, but I'm a woman of a sorrowful countenance. She was too much in honor not to receive. Even when the prophet spoke provocative things, the woman refused to be provoked. She was too much in honor. She was too much in honor to be denied. You know, believe in God's call upon people's lives. Do you know that when believers pray with you and for you, God's power goes into operation. However, how much in honor you are will determine how much you receive from the prayers of believers, which is corporate. When is the miraculous? When I honor what God is doing. When is the miraculous? When I see God's power working. Does it not amaze you that Marcus, who came to arrest Jesus for crucifixion, received healing? He came to arrest Jesus to go and crucify. Peter chopped off his ear. Jesus still healed him even at that point. It shows you how much God wants to heal. God's power is not far from you. Never be tired of seeing miracles. Never be tired. Sickness is not spiritual. Sickness only affects the physical body. So, sickness is physical. Everything that God created from the earth was called good. Man's body was from the dust of the earth. The dust of the earth. And you must remember that it is after the fall of man that the devil began to affect man's health, man's body. Mortality kicked in and it became easy for people to, to be sick, for people to have deformities and have infirmities. And some of those are inflicted by evil spirits. So sickness is as a result of that disobedience and every anomaly. God did not make a sick body from Genesis. God never made a sick body. In fact, if you observe in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. All. He healed all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Look at Luke chapter 4 verse 38 and 39. Luke chapter 4 verse 38 and 39. 
And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever and they besought him for her. Next verse. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. In those days, fever was like a terminal disease. Jesus rebuked the fever. The word rebuked is used to correct something. To confront an oppressor. It seems as though Jesus was talking to personalities when he confronted sickness. Same way he will have rebuked demons, he rebuked sickness. Out! Infirmity. Out! He spoke to sickness as if he was speaking to personalities. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed. Oppressed. So sickness is an oppression of the devil. The word oppressed is used for in relation to tyrants who forcefully dominate people. This summarizes Jesus' healing ministry because Jesus addressed sickness like he was confronting a tyrant. He addressed sickness like he was confronting a tyrant. It will therefore be wrong to address God as someone who puts sickness on people. God doesn't put sickness on people. In Luke chapter 13 verse 11 to 16. I read that as a roundup. Luke chapter 13 verse 11. And behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And was bowed together. And could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to walk. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Next verse. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, this 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. The woman was bent over. She had gotten used to being sick. The word infirmity is used, which is a consistent word for being deaf, dumb, and blind infirmity it was called a disease because it wasn't meant to be like that so jesus rebuking it was to correct it curative creative restorative preservative and of course miracles of provision it is the will of god Jesus demonstrates the willingness of God to heal sickness. There was so much that was not recorded. And you know, today, that power is available. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. And when we pray, we unleash God's power to intervene in the course of nature and produce the desired result the desired expectation say with me very loud i am a receiver i'm not a doubter i know how to receive god's power in my body right now say it again i know how to receive god's power in my body right now say with me god's power is working in my body non-stop Say it again. God's power is working in my body from my head to the soles of my foot. 
Yes, as I'm speaking right now, somebody with an asthmatic condition just got healed. God's healing power has just flown in your body right now. Right now, right now. God's power has just moved into your body right now. Miracles are happening all over the world. Miracles are happening all over the world right now. And I want to pray miracle prayers. I want to pray miracle prayers. I'd like you to stand with me, everybody. You know, lift up your hands and please make sure you place one of your hands in where the infirmity is. If you have a heart condition or lungs or waist or, or knee or, you know, you have a pain in your head or it's your eyesight or your hearing condition, whatever your, your condition is, healing and miracles are about to explode all over this place right now. I'd like you to place your hand there, close your eyes. If you're listening on radio, just do the same wherever you are. If you're watching on television, if you're watching on social media, miracles are exploding in this service right now. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of infirmity, lose your holes. Lose your holes. Lose your holes. Leave that body now. You infirmity, disease, pain, discomfort out. In the name of Jesus. And we command the creative power of God into your body. To create whatever was missing. We command the curative power of God to cure every ailment. Jakotala. We release the restorative power of God right now. To restore, restore, restore. Ayadaba. Every broken bone. Every broken condition. Be restored, restored. Receive restoration. Receive. Receive in the name of Jesus. And we declare right now, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, the preservative power of God over your body, over your system, over your organs. And for those believing for provisions, receive the provision power of God. Miracles of provision. Receive miracles of provision. Receive miracles of of provision supernatural connections supernatural connections supernatural opportunities receive in the name of jesus every need met god's power operating in your body right now thank you father 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 Thank you, Father. Jekola Taba. Negrina Kako. There's a woman who just put to bed a week ago. You're hearing the sound of my voice right now. You put to bed a week ago and then suddenly you got into complications. As you're listening to me right now, you're on the bed. You've not been able to walk. God's power has just moved into your body now. You can get out of that bed. The complications have just been corrected. Now, stand up. Yes, you stand up. That's right. You can do it. Get out of that bed now. Take your first step. Move around that room. That's, that's the power of God all over your body. Body, body, receive strength. Body, receive strength. Bones, receive strength. Joints, marrow, tendons, tissues, receive strength in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There's somebody that has a blocked left, left ear. Your left ear does not hear. It's only your right ear that hears. Put your hand in your left ear right now. Put your finger in your left ear. Yes, that's the power of God. Agabada, that's the power of God. That's the power of God. Now, I command that ear opened. Pull out your hand. In the name of Jesus, le kruta kalu patata. Your ear has just been opened right now. Now, close the right ear and listen with the left one. You can hear very well. Thank you, Father. Sights restored. Seeing conditions are corrected, corrected, corrected. You can see clearly now. Jakula Tamaka Koroto. There's somebody else watching. You've been having, you know, bleeding in your gums. And the doctors are becoming concerned. Bleeding in your gums. God's power has just moved into your gums, correcting every condition. Receive a miracle. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your healing power. 
Thank you, Father, for miracles, signs, and wonders all over the place. Agaba Shokoloda, Mebrika Dagarato Nikakaya. And I declare right now, receive miracle phone calls. Receive miracle emails. Yes, that job has just been approved. Receive a miracle of provisions. Money has just received that alert. Miraculously, somebody has just remembered you and is sending you money right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. Hallelujah. Now begin to do what you couldn't do before. You couldn't bend, bend. You couldn't move, move. You couldn't run, run. Do something. You couldn't read with your eyes before. Grab an, a book and begin to read. You couldn't hear, check the ear. Miracles are all over the place. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you need to give us a call immediately. There's a phone number. Just call and share with us what God has done for you. We're expecting your call. I'm going to read the number in a minute or two. Those of you online, you have a testimony, shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. We want to read from you. Sunday, this coming Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, will be a miracle service. First service, 8 a.m. GMT plus 1. Second service, 11 a.m. GMT plus 1. Also, this Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, is going to be our partnership service. And I'm excited about it. Let me use the opportunity, first of all, say, I want to thank all of you who have given, all of you who have given to support our social media campaign on a global scale. And those of you that are yet to give, who still want to give, all you need to do is shoot an email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. You can support us with $50, $100, $200, $500, $1,000. But we are on a global outreach on social media. We are targeting the 3 billion people on social media. And we are pumping the videos all over the world. One more favor you do for me is make sure when the videos are released, you share those teasers on your various platforms. Put them on WhatsApp group, take them, put them all over the place and share them on your page. We are on an aggressive campaign to get the gospel to the ends of the earth. Now, quickly, those of you who have just confirmed that you just got a miracle or you got a miracle on Sunday, you have a testimony you want to share with us. Let me read a number for you quickly. It is plus two, three, four, plus two, three, four, eight, zero, three, two, seven, five. 6104. I repeat, plus 234 803 275 6104. The last time I'm repeating the number because I know there are miracles all over the world and we're expecting your testimonies. Plus 234 803 275 6104. Give us a call right now. Let us know where you're calling from and what God has done. But I'm excited about the miracles that are happening all over the world. Radio audience, you can also call in. We want to hear what God is doing in your life today. Now, listen to the last announcement. Our Bible reading schedule continues. Our Bible reading schedule continues. So, we have finished till Deuteronomy. The next thing now is we're jumping into the book of Joshua. All right, Joshua, everybody write it down. The next one month, we're going to be examining the book of Joshua. We're going to be looking through the book of Joshua. Amen. We're going to be looking through the book of Joshua, Judges, Root, Joshua, Judges, and Root. The next one month, Joshua, Judges, Root. The next one month okay so it's five chapters every day and i tell you god is doing great things among us here at power city praise god all right now grab your honor offering we want to give in honor of god's word as we await testimonies from all over the world and we're collating the testimonies 
because we're going to read all out and we're going to share with everybody what God is doing and we're going to take more testimonies on Sunday during the miracle service and I'm excited now grab your offerings let's give in honor of God's word wherever you're watching in our campuses house centers grab your offering and the online community the banking details are scrolling on on the screen both on television and scrolling on social media radio audience I'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush in the next one or two minutes for ask the counselor i'll be joining mr michael bush he will read out the banking details for those of you that want to support what we do around the world on radio and on social media but i wanted to know we thank you for always giving and supporting this ministry and all partners i tell you we're going to have a great time on sunday our partnership service but we love you and the best is yet to come lift up your offerings let's pray father thank you for everyone giving today to honor the word and to make our resources available so that through this ministry, the gospel continues to reach the ends of the earth. Everyone giving, I declare their needs met supernaturally. And I thank you for the blessing upon your people today. I give you praise for answer prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for giving to the Lord and thank you for honoring this ministry. You know, and I want you to thank, I want to thank you for always giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Always an honor. To come to you with God's word. I look forward to seeing the other studio as I join Mr. Michael Bush. And until I see you at the other side, I'd like you to enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! Woo! Hallelujah! Amen! We trust that you have been blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino. Please call plus two three four. 806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com FCMB, there is Zenith, and there is UBA. On this edition of the program, with the account name of Costain at Power City International, we're going to start with UBA. So, 139-26-465, 139-26-465, that's for UBA, Power City International. Zenith is 10-12-36-59-12, 10-12-36-59-12, account name, Power City International, and the same for FCMB. 2982-68-2028. That's announcement number one. Quickly, quickly, announcement number two. And that is for sponsorship. You can call up uh, plus 234-803-275-6104. Or you just send an email or two to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Remember, Dr. Abel Damina, the doctor is D-R. Okay, I think I'm set. Uh, even Global by himself is set. Okay, let me see whether I can just join our friends on... Um yeah, our friends on the social media, you know, as Global Baba always says, they, they make this program tick. They make this program what it is. Um, Dixon Maruza, I'd like to thank you. God is love. Tia Udu, I'd like to thank you. Pastor Msapaila Mubanga Wesu Oliver, I'd like to thank you. Enoekwa, I'd like to thank you too. There's Dixon Maruza again. I just mentioned that. Nachi 
Oko Chuku. That's what it is. And there is um, Chris Covenant. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Lost Cruise in Italy, I'd like to thank you more. Fidelia Adakue Dozie Mofebu is also there, and so to learn Chisanda and Abu, uh, Abdu should be. And finally, 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 can I just take one or two now? There is uh, Busha Bayeso and um, Vivian Ochai. Global Bias here, help me, the world, to welcome this award-winning author. He's written, um, you know, more, than, more, more books than you can count. Uh, very soon, Global Baba, your books are going to be uncountable, you know. So, and um, it's a, it, an international televangelist and somebody who teaches the Bible like no one else. Help me welcome Global Baba, Dr. Ebel Damina. The intercontinental Mr. Bush. So, so good nice to see, to see you, Global Baba. You again today. So nice, so nice. What a blessing. So nice. And then the church auditorium, you know, packed full. Yes. It's so nice to see that. The word of God. Everybody's Absolutely. learning. Everyone is yeah. uh, in haste and they're learning. Yes. They're learning real good. Praise so um, holy, um, uh, I was going to say holy uh, global Baba, you know. <laughs> but yesterday, yes, you know, global Baba, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Every day you must drop. Yesterday you told us that uh, holiness is not about sinlessness. Yes. That holiness is being called out. Hagios, the Greek word hagios, to be set apart. So, but we've been, been using it all along wrongly. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the problem with Bible teaching. Go, but why don't you just sit us down one day and just pack all those things that we've been doing wrongly and tell us one day, not today you drop <laughs> one, tomorrow. You know, because I don't understand. For instance, you said baptism. Yes. It could be an action. It could be something else. It could so, be teaching. Yes. We, we keep teaching it small, small precept upon precept. That's the way it's taught. Okay. It's going to take a bit of time, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. Without any further ado, the Global Bar by yesterday... We ended, uh, it, would, it would seem mid-air, because yes. we're just doing anonymous, 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 and the time was up. So we'll start with some anonymous entries today. Please, I want to know, Global Baba, is it a must that believers pray for forgiveness after they might have done wrong, or just the acknowledgement in our heart or mind is enough? Please, if possible, I also need Bible passages to support the answer. Thank you, Global Baba. Well, first of all, when it has to do with forgiveness or uh, receiving forgiveness, it's what you receive the day you got born again. And from the moment you're born again, you are eternally forgiven. When you do wrong, you don't need to confess. You don't need to cry. You don't need to beg. You just need to acknowledge. Knowing that you've done wrong is the beginning. So what do you do? You make the adjustment. It's like you're looking at a mirror and you make adjustments. The word of God is a mirror. So when you do wrong, all you need to do is make adjustments. And when you make the adjustments, you, you, it's fixed. The blood of Jesus is constantly washing you, even when you know and when you don't know. You know, the reason why people think you have to confess your sin is because people are thinking of lying, stealing, you know, and all of those. But there are sins that are more serious, that are not seen with the human eye, that people commit all the time. For example, he that knoweth to do good and knoweth it not, to him is sin. Okay? The Bible also tells us that if you look at a woman lustfully, just looking at her, you've committed adultery. So there are such sins, sins like, you know, unforgiveness, malice, they are all there. And every day people get involved with one sin or the other. And you may not even know when you've done them. And so that's why the guarantee is Jesus. His blood is constantly washing. So when you do wrong, what you do is you, you quickly stay away from it, get out of it. Like the prodigal son stood up and said, I will go back to my father. He stood up and he walked back home. That's the way it is in, in the kingdom. Now scriptures, there are many scriptures. So my advice, get my book, get my book on the Christocentric meal. I took a whole month in the Christocentric meal, 30 days of teaching on the forgiveness of sins with all the scriptures well explained. Okay, Global Baba, I take two more anonymous entries and then we make progress. This one, what is baptism, Global Baba? When people say that uh, when you are baptized, the old sinful person dies and emerges from the water to walk in newness of life. What does that mean exactly, Global Baba? And what happens if we stumble in a Christian walk after baptism? Well, again, that word baptism has to be well explained within the context. There's no omnibus application to any word of scripture. I can't really take this time to teach you what baptism is. But like we said, there is baptism as an act and there's a baptism as teaching. And you have to be able to know which one we're talking about at which time in scripture. But baptism has nothing to do with salvation. I mean, water baptism has nothing to do with salvation. Baptism is both 
receiving Christ and water and teaching. The scripture you quoted in Romans chapter 6, which is baptized into the newness of life, is not water baptism. It's receiving Jesus into your heart. The moment you receive Jesus, you are baptized into Christ. That is, you are immersed. Christ has taken over your whole being. He has become your life. He has become everything to you. That's what it means. Okay, Global Papa, I'm wondering whether that um, very analytical response you've given preempts um, the next uh, leg of okay. the question by the same sender. Is it, Global Papa, is there just um, one way or there are more ways to get baptized? Or does the Bible tell us how it should be done? Does it matter? Well, again, in being baptized, like we said, you just get born again. That's what it means to be baptized. Uh, the water baptism in the Bible is not, it, it was just given to John the Baptist so that it can be used to identify Jesus. That's the whole purpose of water baptism. And once Jesus was identified, John and his baptism expired. Now Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So the moment you receive Christ, he comes into your heart, you are saved eternally. Global Papa, and this is the last anonymous piece that I'll be taking on this edition of the program. What is the message in Hebrews 6.4? Once, Global Papa, you said it's the guarantee of eternal salvation. The other day you said it's speaking to the unbelieving Jews. We'll appreciate clarification so I may be certain when I teach others too. Well, again, I think you're, you're not following well because... Uh, the book of Hebrews is the book written to Jews believing, unbelieving, and will be believing. And when he was talking in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, he was telling them to abandon the, the, all the rituals of the Old Testament and go on to perfection. And then he now said that this, will we, this we will do if God permits, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, have tasted of the heavenly gift, if they shall fall away, to renew them again to repentance. Now, this is where the lacuna is. Seeing they crucify to themselves afresh the Son of God and put him to an open shame. Can you crucify Jesus a second time? It's not possible. The prophecy says he will be crucified once. The Bible tells us that he died once and he rose. He's not going to die anymore. So if Jesus will not be crucified a second time, it means if a believer receives Christ, he cannot fall away because there is no second crucifixion of Jesus. So once you are saved, you are saved eternally. That's why that Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4 is actually the scripture that guarantees eternal salvation. However, if you, if you reach out to our office, you'll be shown how to download one of my books for free that deals with such scriptures and gives you depth of exegesis on those subjects. As I said, we're done with anonymous entries, but just, there is just one near anonymous entry that I must um, handle before I go on to talk of other things. I must just talk of this one. It says, greetings. My name is Lucia. Doesn't tell us where she's writing from, but it says, Global Baba, I need help with negative words that come to my mind every time. They are not okay at all. I'm a born-again Christian. This has been going on for too long. I've tried all things. When I try to meditate, I end up focusing on these words, these negative words, instead of the word. It feels global power, like my mind is controlling me. I need your counseling. Well, if your, if your mind is full of negative words, it means you are not spending enough time to eat the word of God. Garbage in, garbage out. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It means you're putting in a lot of rubbish into you. Even though you're born again, you're spending a lot of time on carnal things, on things that are not of spiritual edification. So what do you need to do? You need to change your company. You need to change your focus. You need to refocus and begin to spend more time on the Word of God. The more you spend time on the Word of God, the more the Word of God goes into you, the more it begins to affect the kind of things that you think about. So spend more time on the teaching of God's Word. And that's the way to get out of it. Okay, Global Baba, by the way, this edition of the program is the African edition. We're going to focus only around on, or only on Africa. Uyo, it's uh, on the radar now. It says, hello, Global Baba and Mr. Michael Bush. My name is Otto Bong. I write from Uyo. Global Baba, I have a problem with the lifestyle that I live. I find it very difficult to change. Can it be possible for one to live and die without being able to change Global Baba? I know that the things I do are bad, but I can't just change my character. I don't know what's happening to me. 
Global Baba, I have tried many times, but as I write to you, I feel very empty and I have no comfort in my strength. Sometimes things very bad will happen, making me to run out of uh, home with nowhere to go, but I would unbelievably, Global Baba, start with the very same thing I ran from. Please help me, Global Baba. All right. Okay. Global Baba, I hear that. Uh, okay, the callers are here. Okay. I said 10 minutes and 10 minutes uh, just now. This first caller. Hello. Good evening, Global Papa. Good evening. Bless you. Good evening, Intercontinental. So, I'm Bush. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Your name will you call My from? name is Reverend Sam Adala. Adala. Aha, okay. <laughs> We're sure, bro. We're sure, yeah, sure. Welcome to our show. Yeah, welcome back. Thank Mr. You. Michael Bush. Thank you. Papa, we thank God for the ministry the Lord has committed into your hands. We are daily blessed. And I'm privileged to tell the audience and the whole world that this is God sent man of God, in whom God is pleased. The whole world let us hear him. For this is the generation whereby the truth is being revealed. And we are catching the revelation, Papa. Reverend Dr. Hidetamina, we bless your life. We bless God for you. Thank you. And we thank God for the producer. Sir, I just want to ask a question for tonight. Then other days, I keep on touching with the anointing. Good. When we talk about this word holiness, even superpower general overseer, till today they are still telling us that without this holiness, no man can enter the kingdom of God. How do small boys like us convince us when we teach some of these things? Because they say even the small lie is baby life is going to hell. Everything hell, everything hell. And now we see deeper revelation on the word holiness. We have thought that holiness is being totally free from sin. Thank you, Papa, as you help us on this. Well, that, that scripture that says without holiness no man shall see the Lord, actually it's not been interpreted well. It has been abused very seriously in Africa most especially. You know, um, uh, when the Bible says follow all men with peace in the book of Hebrews and without holiness no man shall see the Lord, it was talking about interpersonal relationship, our relationship with one another, that you should follow each other with peace. You should live peace with other brethren because without living the conduct that reflects you as a believer, people around will not see Christ in your life. That's what he's talking about. So he's dealing with Christian conduct, which exemplifies the life of Christ so that people around can see Christ. He doesn't mean that you will not see the Lord like see Christ. You're already in Christ. Christ is already in you. You know, and if Christ is in you and you're in him already, nothing can separate that union. So that verse was actually talking about unbelievers seeing our conduct and knowing that we are with Christ. Okay, Global Baba, let's get back to let's get back to Otto Bong in New York. He's been hanging on. Okay, so Otto uh, Bong, first of all, you cannot change yourself. So mm. stop trying. Because if you keep trying, you'll get frustrated and keep doing the things you don't want to do more and more. That is the futility of human effort. That is the futility of human ability. You cannot save yourself. If you can save yourself, you don't need Jesus. It is because you cannot save yourself that Jesus died for you. So what should you do? I will advise you, if you are close by in Uyo, stop by 98 Waniba Road. So we can take time, share with you the message, pray for you, and minister to you, so that whatever is holding you bound will leave you alone, so you can enjoy Christ the way you intend to enjoy him. That's my advice for you, Otobo. And just in time for a second caller. Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Many thanks for joining us. You know where you're calling from? I'm, I'm Mira Kusa. Calling from Uwe, Futo. Miracle, go ahead. Yes, sir. I have a question for Papa. Fire on. Sir, 
before I go on, I must uh, comment Papa on his on his speeches. I'm a dad follower of him, and I appreciate him so much for all the revelation knowledge that he showed me in my eyes. With. Thank you. My yeah. first question is this: What is the this, what is the meaning of the first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first? Oh, it was just a parable then, Jesus gave. That was a parable. And you don't take parables literal because a parable has a fiction, a fact, and has a lesson. All right? So it was a parable Jesus was giving. And we need to read the pretext and the posttext to be able to understand the full import of that parable. So next time, when you quote that scripture, tell us where you're quoting from so we can put it up, read it, and explain to you. Okay, still around you, there is another entry, Global Baba. doesn't say where she writes from that because, I mean, you just take that. Hello, Global Baba. My name is Josephina. Sir, so I am always down emotionally. I'm getting tired of the massive family responsibilities solely on me as a woman. Let God open doors of opportunities for my husband and strengthen me. Please uh, counsel my husband and my family. We want to have peace and enjoy our marriage. All right, Josephina, I don't know what to counsel your husband and your family on, but if I could gather well, what you said is that you are the one bearing the responsibility of your family. Mm. Uh, well, again, we, we need more information. Was your husband working before? He is just temporarily out of work, and then you have to embark on the responsibility? Or has he always been irresponsible from the day you met him until now? All those kind of things are the things we need to clarify before we can counsel. So what you do is send us another email and give us all the details. So we can give you proper counsel. Bless you. Another caller. Hello. Hello. Many thanks Good for evening, joining sir. us. Yes. Good evening, Global Baba. Evening. Bless you. Uh, my name is Grace Udo. Uh There are some teachings I listened to that talked about God creating everything for Himself and that these creations describe his person. But there's a scripture or there's a passage of the Bible, Revelation 6, 16, that talks about the wrath of the Lamb. I just need some clarification on that. Well, again, the book of Revelation is a book of symbols. It's a book of heavy symbols. It's not, it's not much of a literal book. So whatever you read in the book of Revelation, you don't take it literal. And I will advise you to order for my teaching on understanding the book of Revelation. That should sort you out. Because if I want to go into the book of Revelation now, we will use all the evening time that we have for questions to begin to unpack symbols, clarify what symbol is what, which verses of scripture. It will have to take exegesis. And I don't have the time now. Global Baba will make um, haste and go on to yet another entry still from Uyo, Nigeria. Hello, Global Baba. In Paul's letter in 1 Timothy 4, 12 to 16, to Pastor Timothy, was Apostle Paul referring to the youth, especially in verse 12, where he said, Let no man despise thy youth. Or was it a general comment about the conduct of youths in ministry? Please, I need clarity here. Thank you so much, sir. Innocent in Uyo. Well, he was talking to the youths in Paul's day, which is applicable to the youths today. Let okay. nobody despise you. Okay, so peace doesn't tell us where um, he or she is writing from. It just says Nigeria, so we claim that she'd be from you. It says, hello, dear Global Baba. I once heard you say the book of Revelation is the list of the epistles. Why is it the list, sir? Because it's full of symbols. It's angels trying to reveal Jesus. And remember, angels don't even know Jesus. Because First Peter chapter 1, verse 10, 11, and 12 says they desire to look into Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 says the church will teach angels the wisdom of God. So the little angels know is what they have learned from us. But when angels now take it on themselves to try to unveil Jesus to, to, to John in the book of Revelation, they will use a lot of symbols. That's why the book is full of heavy metaphors that requires explanation from the doctrinal book. So that's why it's very light where doctrine is concerned. Because it's a book that is born out of a vision and a revelation. I remember Brother Paul say, said in Galatians 1, 6, Though an angel or any other person come from heaven to tell you anything other than what we have taught you in the doctrinal books, let him be anathema. So when it has to do with visions and all of that, we subject them to the scrutiny of sound doctrine. So that's why the book is a light book 
where doctrine is concerned. Still from you, I guess, dear Dr. Abel Damina and heaven minded citizens, kingdom greetings to all of you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Global Baba, I'm Pastor Emmanuel Ederokun. I'm known as Evangelist Emmanuel Eder on Facebook. I'm currently with Deeper Life Bible Church, but God has been ordering me to build myself more in healing and prophetic ministry so that I can bring more souls to the kingdom of God. And even the prophetic messages have been coming to me in most cases in our church, but since our church doctrine is against it, believing in the word of God only, I have to always struggle with my spirit, even the spirit of God. Now I need a helping hand, even with knowledge, to continue expounding, preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. I need you to counsel me. Well, again, my advice is simple. Instead of giving too much time to praying for you to do miracles, pray to know the scriptures. Because the only way you can bring people to the saving knowledge of Christ is by teaching them the word of God. And the only way you can build believers is by teaching them the word of God. So, you know, give yourself a lot more to the teaching of God's word. The gifts of the spirit will naturally flow as you grow in the knowledge of, of God's word. Okay, Global Papa, let's um, just take this last one from you as we prepare to, you know, go outside the, um, the state capital. It says, um, thank you very much, uh, Global Baba, for the eternal blessing you are to the world. Sir, please, I would like to ask um, you whether putting on jewelry is sin. Putting on jewelry? Mm -hmm. No, it's not sin in any way. There's no scripture that says it's a sin. I know you're looking at one scripture in the Old Testament that talks about how that the children of Israel took their gold and jewelry and made a golden calf. Well, remember also the same Bible you're using now. Some people abuse it by using it for other things other than Christ. It doesn't make the Bible less anointed. So, hey, if you have the money, you can afford jewelry, use them. But remember, don't put more premium on jewelry than you put on your spirit man. That's the way to, you know, look at it. A back, a back, a back still in Akwaibum State is um, another, an, an export of call. Says, hello, Global Baba. Please, according to your teaching the other day that baptism can take place without water, how can we reconcile Acts 8? which emphasizes water baptism. I'm Achibon in the back. Achibon, you're not listening well. You're listening selectively. And selective hearing is a disease. It's actually a medical disease. You must never listen selectively. Listen holistically. We said there is baptism that is teaching, there is baptism that is salvation, and there is baptism that is water. All right? So the scripture you quoted was water baptism. But that's not the only scripture that talks about baptism. There are more scriptures that talk about baptism than the scripture that talks about water. So follow the teachings and listen carefully and listen well so that you have sound understanding. It's very important. Bless you. From Abak to Eket. Hello, uh, Global Baba. I greet you, sir. Please explain why God allowed King Herod to kill thousands of innocent children instead of god to kill the king alone for the sake of jesus we are confused why god had to allow this happen or were these children of wicked origin elder henry prince from make it well elder if you have been following you know it's not god that is behind that all right so and god does not control human will he doesn't control your choice for example why did god allow you to send us an email asking us a question okay why did god allow you god shouldn't have allowed you God should have told you to follow the teaching more and not ask a question before you follow the teaching more. So now, hold on. If God cannot control, if God cannot control you writing us emails, that is the same way God did not control Herod. God allowed Herod to make his choices. Remember the book of James chapter 1 verse 13 says, Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. God gave man the free will, and God does not control it. So whatever man decides to work with, will be, he will enjoy, have to live with the outcome of his choices. However, the only part that God plays in there, where the will of man is concerned, is to show man mercy, to provide salvation. Even with that, God will still allow you to either make the choice to go for it, or to make the choice to reject it. So that's the way God functions. He's a loving father. He's not a tyrant. Next, Prince, who writes from Nigeria, doesn't tell us where, so we just claim that it should be around um, Eket. It says, your messages, Global Baba, have blessed us. You taught the other day that God doesn't curse. 
please, I need clarification on the curse of the fig tree by Jesus, especially when the Bible said the fig tree wasn't in its season. Please put me through, Global Baba. Thank you. It was a translation issue. Jesus didn't curse the tree. Jesus, the original says he spoke to it. Why did he speak to the tree? Because he was teaching the disciples a lesson in how to exercise your authority. That's why after he spoke to the tree, when Peter asked him the question, he said to Peter, have faith in God. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, like I said, to that tree, be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that what he says shall come to pass, he shall have what he says. So he was using an analogy of that tree to teach like he did with all the other parables in the four gospels. Ikorabasi, it's where we headed next. Hello, our father in the Lord. I'm Daniel. I write from Ikorabasi, Akwaibum State, Nigeria. I have a problem understanding the book of Matthew 24, 34. Please, Daddy, which generation was Jesus talking about in this verse? Thank you. Matthew 24, 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Again, when he says generation in the Bible, it's not generation today as you think or as you, you know, as you look at it like one generation, two generation. It was actually talking about the prophecies that were predicted about the things that were going to happen to him in his sufferings and in his resurrection. What he was actually saying is that those prophecies of his death, burial, and resurrection will happen within that space of time in which he was talking with them in the book of Matthew. Okay, so we finally out of Akwaibon. We headed to next door, River State, Port Harcourt. Here we come. Hello, Global Baba. I am an addicted follower of your teachings, and I've been tremendously blessed by your exposition on the doctrine of Christ and new creation realities, which are gradually missing out in today's pulpit. However, Global Baba, I have concerns about your response to a question in today's, that is on the, was on the 27th of December 2020 program, uh, about altar calls, and more specifically, the confession of Christ as a conditional prerequisite for salvation. I agree, Global Baba, perfectly with you when you responded that believing in Jesus Christ is a condition to be saved. However, I became slightly uncomfortable when you went further to really get the aspect of confessions. This contradicted my scriptural leanings as an evangelist, and I wouldn't mind to learn more from you and understand better in this regard. I'll continue to celebrate God's grace upon your life and ministry and hope to hear from you. Ambassador Basi Okora for in Potako City. Well, Ambassador Basi, can you give me one scripture that says when you lead people to Christ, call them to the altar. If you can't find a scripture for it, that should start resetting your mind. That altar call is not a prerequisite for salvation. However, believing in Jesus, believing in Jesus is what is required to be saved. Now, I never said you shouldn't confess Christ. But again, confessing Christ is not just verbal, it's not just the talk. It begins from the heart, all right? It begins from the heart. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And then because he has believed in his heart, and he has become righteous in his heart, the mouth expresses what took place in the heart. All right? So that's the way it works with salvation. Okay, so from Rivers, Global Baba, we're headed next to Abia. We have two entries there. One, this one is counseling. Can I take this uh, caller? Meanwhile, hello. Are you there? Okay, we make. Uh, hello? Okay, many thanks for joining us. So, anyway, you're calling from one minute. Uh, please, my name is Pam Daniel. I'm speaking, I'm speaking from Akwa Ibo. All right, go ahead, Pam, go ahead. Mr. Please, I want to make an inquiry. I want to make an inquiry. Yeah, fire on. Uh, uh, please, this job of witness, uh, I know that you know, all of us are Christians. And uh, then I want to make an inquiry because of say then they need to celebrate Christmas, and they don't use uh, this thing earrings and and this uh, uh, you know all these electronics. And I don't know whether it's right <laughs> or not. How does that affect your work with Christ? 
Well, you Pam, know. I think you should look for a Jehovah's Witness building somewhere. <laughs> Go there and ask them, why don't you? Because I'm not Jehovah's Witness, so I can't sure, answer that sure, question for you. Sure. So sure. let, let's, let's, let's stay just, focused on Christ absolutely. and what Christ has done. Absolutely. For you. That's more important. So, Abia State, here we come. Greetings to you, Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina, and the Intercontinental Michael Bush. May God Almighty always keep your household and you blessed as you continue all your good work. Please, sir. I am very challenged. I need your prayers and your counseling too. I'm in my final year of study, about to graduate, but it's been two years now. I've been dreaming where I see myself selling pure water, that's sachet water, and uh, also seeing myself in my primary school, that is in my dream. When I made inquiries about the dreams, my pastors said that it means limitations and backwardness, which I was told to be prayerful. But sir, sincerely have prayed many times, even made some sacrifices in churches, just to see that everything turns good. To no avail. Instead, the dreams keep coming back even more. I dream of it sometimes in the day, global baba, and sometimes at night. Please, I'm tired of going to church to make sacrifices. I'm paying money to raise prayer altars, and I'm confused. Please, what should I do? And please also pray for me, Thompson, in Abia State. This caller, hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Many thanks for joining us. You know where you're calling from. <clears throat> yeah, this is the I'm calling from Mr. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, Glover Papa. Evening, bless you. Right, uh, bless you too, sir. Um, what's the plan to let you shift off your life? Uh, being one of the sons that have been following up, and ever since I've followed it up, my life has never been made the same again. But please, I have a question. Okay. The issue is it's my the church I attend, but ever since I've followed you up, I've come to understand some certain things in life. And my church does not really preach the resurrection, the power and the resurrection of Christ. And because of that, I can't flow anymore. I'm no more flowing in the church. In fact, I hardly go to church. If I go, I don't go to my family. Because I find it so lazy. Apart from, I do sing in the choir and officiate in the ushering department. I don't do any of that thing again. I'm just like that. So please, I want to ask in such way, what should I do? Because I discover within me, if I go to church, I don't have that peace within me. So please, in such situation, please, I need your advice. Well, I think you're growing spiritually. That's the point. You have, you have grown beyond your church. So when you grow beyond the trouser, what do you do with the trouser? You either change the trouser or you, you mend the trouser. So it's one of the two. You either mend the church or you change the church. Global Baba. Yes. That's speaking in parables too. <laughs> Is that not a parable, Global Baba? Okay, Jesus, Global Baba, let, let's Jesus spoke in parables. Absolutely. So, <laughs> Global Baba, let's get back to Thompson, um, the guy who's been dreaming about being in primary school or, you know, all the other things. And as you are praying, the dreams are increasing. Yeah, sure. So, it shows you that you're doing something wrong. Because if what you're doing is right, it shouldn't be increasing. So now, the first thing is, the reason why you're seeing all of those dreams is because they have made them important. <laughs> So because you have made them important, you're always thinking about it. And because you're thinking about it, you're dreaming it more. Because out of the multitude of your thoughts, the dreams are multiplying. The first thing to do is, first of all, tell yourself, I can never go back to my primary school. It's not even humanly possible. <laughs> Number two, tell yourself, I, I can never sell pure water. It's not even humanly possible because where I am right now, I am beyond where I can sell pure water for survival. Then tell yourself, I have Christ. Christ in me guarantees me a future. And I can tell you, you are in the wrong church. Look for a church where they will teach you Christ. Your real problem is that church where you're going. Because if your pastor tells you that because you drank pure water and old primary school, it is backwardness in your life. It means your pastor doesn't even know the scriptures and is not in the right place to lead you spiritually. So my advice, look for a church where Christ is preached. Because when you focus on Christ, those stupid dreams will disappear. That's my advice. Just in time, this next caller. Hello. Uh, good evening, Papa. Welcome evening. to the program, yes. Good evening, Papa. Evening. Uh, I want to thank you for what you have done. In fact, I've been in the program from the 50 States of Glory. And we have a prayer program in the church. If I speak about but I stop hearing from you and listening a lot. Is it I see a disability or a, is it if I stop going to 
Or should I regard that I did the Because I enjoy this program much. I enjoy the Okay, I understand. So because you're following what we're doing, mm. you're missing the prayer programs in your church. So no, no, no. You, Is that you... what he said? No, he's saying he's, he enjoys this one more. And so it doesn't feel like? I think so. No, I think he says that? they're doing a prayer program in their okay, church. Okay. But because he enjoys this enjoys program, he, ditch, he, he puts off his church okay. phone and mm. stays to follow this. So what does Is he want us to do now? Scene? Well, the choice is yours. Mm. Where you are fed, that's where you stay. If we're feeding you and your church is not feeding you, stay here and keep eating. Because if you eat well and grow well, maybe one day you will be in a position to even help your church to pray better. So, that's bad. So, from uh, Abia, we still stay on an Abia Global Baba. says, hello, Global Baba. I'm Chaplain Marcel from Abia State. I'm facing serious challenges in my business. I take a loan to grow my business, but nothing comes out every time, Global Baba. This has continued for too long and made things too difficult for me. What on earth is the matter, Global Baba? Well, the matter is that you need somebody who is an expert on financial advice to counsel you and help you, an expert in finances. Because you may be doing the wrong thing with the loans you're collecting. And you may have even no need for the loans. Maybe it's not even a loan you need. You just need good ideas and all of that. So talk to people who are experts in that field. I'm not an authority there. That's why I'm shying away from giving you counsel on that. My expertise is the word of God. Bless you. Global Baba. Global Baba. The intercontinental. Okay, from, from Abia, let's get to Benue. Uh, it says, dear Mr. Bush, my name is Samuel. I write from Benue State. Is there anything that God cannot forgive? Please put that question to Global Baba for me. Like belonging to one of the world's renowned occult organizations like Illuminati, free mercenary, etc. I understand their members surrender their souls to their gods. Can they retract and God accepts them or they are doomed for life? Well, there's no sin that God cannot forgive. Jesus died to save everybody. So if a man is in Illuminati or in a cult somewhere where he has vowed his soul to the devil, all he needs is the preaching of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And if he accepts the gospel, he'll be free from all of those affiliations. From Benue State, we go to... Next door, Nasarawa State. First door, this caller. Hello. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the program. You know where you're calling from? I'm coming. I'm calling from Miracle, sir. My name is Miracle. Miracle again? Yes. Yes, go ahead. I, I have another question. Fire on. Yes, sir. Then Jesus, said, Jesus said about the about the first, first prophet that up, after the first prophet speech, that um, rapture will not take place in that generation passes. What does that mean? And the generation has passed, and rapture has not to take place. You are reading your Bible upside down. You are not reading it well. Because what you are trying to say is that Jesus lied. And it is not Jesus, it is you that is wrong. Because you are not reading well. So my advice for you, Miracle... Carry that scripture where you read. Read from the beginning of that chapter. Read the whole chapter. Read the whole book. Read Matthew 1 to the end. When you finish the whole book, if you're really serious, then come back to that chapter 24 and read the previous verses and the verses after. If you still do not understand my advice, order for my book, The Last Days. The Last Days did a lot of justice on Matthew 24. It will give you verse by verse exegesis explaining the whole concept for you to understand. As I've arrived home, I'm Leonard from Kitwe, Zambia. Bless you, Leonard. We're glad to have and know that you're growing. Still from Zambia, Pastor Chilungu writes, I'm one of your students in the ongoing mentorship program, Global Baba. I really need your counseling on our marriage. For we got divorced, but we want to come back together. And this can only take place when we go through your counseling. Thank you, Global Bar. Bar. Greetings from my family and me and the entire Everlasting Joy Church in Zambia. Wow, praise the Lord. Congratulations. We'll be willing to counsel with you and your wife so you can reconcile and come back together and serve God and fulfill God's purpose together. We rejoice with the step you're already taking. Global Baba, let's go to Rwanda next. Quickly, quickly. It's Fred. Fred writes from Rwanda. What's the meaning 
Global Baba of if you don't get hot or cold, I will vomit you in Revelation 3.16. Is, does this refer to loss of salvation? No, it refers, to, it refers to a mixture of law and grace. That's what it refers to. Global Baba, we're um, spending the night um, in South Africa. This one says, hello, Global Baba. I recently started to follow your teachings on Facebook. Thank you for the truth of God's Bible teachings. Are women allowed to preach or not? I've read First Timothy 2, 12, and First Corinthians, and um, I'm getting confused with John 4, the Samaritan woman and Mary Magdalene, whom Jesus charged with responsibility at resurrection. This is Kibakile Muleti in Bluefontein, South Africa. Well, I'm glad you are interrogating more. And as you keep interrogating, you will also find where it says, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Prophecy is the preaching of the gospel. So, when you see where the Bible says women should keep quiet in the church, Brother Paul was dealing with husband and wife relationship, pointing the woman back to the place of submission. That's all it means. It does not affect women preaching and fulfilling ministry. That's why the woman who still had four husbands, Jesus allowed her to go and bring a whole city to him. He didn't tell her, go and send your husbands away first before you preach. Okay, so as you grow, as you keep following you will understand that God wants every man, every woman to preach the gospel because in the spirit, there is no male, there is no female. It's the same Holy Spirit in a man and a woman. And we're all mandated to go to the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. Global Baba, we must go because time says so. But before we go, we could just take one long minute and um, dwell on some prayer requests. We have a number of prayer requests. Sometimes some people um, talking concerning business, yep. others about their health, others about their marriage, marriage and all of that. Father, we rejoice because of the opportunity we have to demand and to receive on behalf of everyone who are sending a prayer request. We speak healing to those who are in need of healing. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We speak marital favors, supernatural connections, and marital breakthroughs for those in need of husbands or wives. In the name of Jesus, Amen. receive that miracle. We pray for women in need of fruit of the womb. We declare a miracle. In the name of Jesus, Amen. receive the fruit of the womb in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for students who are seeking admission. The favor of God is upon you and we command that supernaturally you receive help and assistance to be admitted in those schools in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, generally we decree and declare right now the expectations of your people granted and released. Receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Global Baba, we must Praise go. God. This is Michael Bush inviting Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina, to take us home on this edition of the program. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush, I tell you, it's beginning again, and we're so excited to have all of you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. And don't forget to follow our radio broadcast. They continue tonight at uh, 9 to 10 on Inspiration, 10 to 12 on Heritage. Tomorrow morning, 11 to 1 o'clock, Radio Acquire Bomb, 1 to 3, XLFM, 3 to 5, you know, UFM. And we're back here again, on 6 Comfort. p.m. on Comfort FM. We love you guys. Enjoy the grace of Jesus and keep growing in the knowledge of Christ. We connect again tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. Be blessed. Good night. Bye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Thank you.